we've also approved the rebasing of tariffs for August, and we've also approved the rebasing of tariffs uh, for October. So we've said, and, and I think there was one other prior condition about interest uh, rates and, and LTTF, LTFF, long-term financing facility, and EFS, export financing um, uh, and, and, and scheme, and, and all of those tariffs have also been, all of those rates have also been raised. So we've met uh, the prior conditions uh, uh, by the IMF. Uh, to, to be able to get, hopefully, uh, the first tranche whenever their board meeting takes place. Unfortunately, because of the board holidays, the board meeting is in the later part of August, although I would hoping that it would be in the earlier part of August. Uh, there's been some talk about uh, corruption laws, and I, this is why the IMF thing came to my mind, uh, about some anti-corruption laws, and in fact, uh, it, although it's not a prior action, it is a structural benchmark, I think the IMF did talk about anti-corruption laws, and, and, and they've been talking about this since the fifth review, which I think was in 19, 2020, uh, and, and there were some disagreements, but this time I was very enthusiastic about this, and I actually quickly agreed to this, except that I just had it, I wanted to add two other things. Uh, the, 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 this, the benchmark was about uh, forming a team that would do a diagnostic analysis of anti-corruption laws in Pakistan. Uh, what I really added, uh, the effectiveness of anti-corruption laws in Pakistan. What I added was uh, two other clauses. One was that uh, not just the effectiveness of the anti-corruption laws, but also uh, whether these laws can or have been used to uh, persecute or victimize your political opponents. Uh, because that's also possible. And then third also, if the, is there a trade-off between efficiency and effectiveness of the government and anti-corruption laws? Uh, for instance, uh, Pakistan today is buying very expensive uh, LNG on spot rates and the previous government was unable to do a long-term deal. And when you ask them, and they've said this on TV many times, that they said that they were scared of anti-corruption laws or NAB laws. Uh, so that's a huge cost to the government of Pakistan because some previous ministers were scared of those laws. So then you have to see what is the effectiveness and what is the, what is the advantage of the anti-corruption laws. Uh, and inshallah we will uh, hire, in consultation with the IMF and, and civil society of Pakistan, uh, we will constitute a commission of some of the best experts from around the world. Uh, I hear that New Zealand and Singapore are two of the least corrupt countries in the world, so hopefully we'll get experts from there. We'll get experts from Pakistan, and, and, and I told yesterday that I'll get experts from Pakistan Business Council. Uh, if there are other civic organizations who want to name experts, I'm more than happy to include and do a comprehensive review because my, f my feeling is, and this is, I don't have any firm data to back this up, that my feeling is that, you know, even though we've had NAV for now uh, 20 some years, corruption in Pakistan has not gone down. Similarly, we've had these PEPRA rules in Pakistan for 20 some years, but it's not clear to me that Pakistan procures uh, at a much lesser rate compared to the international rates, things, goods and services, uh, compared to what it was doing before the PEPRA rules. So these rules have actually become more of a straight jacket, also an excuse to some people to not work. But these people, have, these rules have become a straight jacket and, and not allowing people to work. So that's the that's the anti-corruption part. There is also this part that people talk about friendly countries having aiding us, and some people have said that. That's a prior condition. I can say that it's not a prior condition. But yes, there is a case that we have a $4 billion financing gap that we have to find during the year, and we will. And as I've said to many people many times, that we are talking to a friendly country about buying Pakistani shares. There was no, There is no possibility of us sharing a government-to-government -government, uh, shares on a government-to-government -government basis. So we are now amending the law appropriately to be able to sell those shares. Uh, even though we've not even started negotiating with that country uh, yet, there's already accusations of you know how we're selling the family silver and all that. <laughs> we're only selling shares of companies which are already traded in the Karachi Stock Exchange. We're only selling a little bit shares of each company, so they're not. We're not selling majority stakes or ownership stakes or management stakes. And finally, these shares will be sold on. Uh, buyback basis. So, I mean, like if I sell something for $100 today and I can buy this for $105, then really the price is not relevant, right? Because at, at any given price, I can always sell it back, buy it back for 5%. So all of these will be a repo. I will have a, a buyback clause on, on those shares. So, so any allegations of any uh, 
any anything uh, inappropriate, I think, just falls flat. Uh, but so, but but my, my my point was that there is a friendly country, for instance, uh, that is willing to buy our shares, and that would be help us go a long way towards uh, f uh, finding our uh, funding our gap, financing gap. There are other com countries who are also willing to buy our uh, power plants, Bikki, uh, not not Bikki, sorry, Baloki and uh, Haveli Badosha, the two federal government-owned power plants. Uh, uh, that uh, have been on the auction block for some time, but uh, you know, other there are friendly countries that are willing to buy. Again, it's very easy to figure out the market price because we already know what tariffs they have, and if you know what tariffs they have, you already know what profits they have, and if you know that, then you can just you know figure out a price earning ratio and then figure out a you know fair market price. Uh, there are also friendly countries who are you know talking to us about you know giving us. Uh, energy uh, uh, fuels, whether gas or electricity, or whether gas or petrol or diesel or, or fuel of crude oil on, on credit uh, deferred payment. They already, we already have some deferred payment uh, facilities with some countries and, and there's talk of enhancing. So I have more than actually uh, four billion dollars of financing. Uh, so even although it is not a prior condition, but even if it were, it's more than met. Uh, so the IMF thing is going to happen. The other thing that we've done, and, and, and I'm not talking about the fact that we've averted default because we've done that and it's been talked about and we've not defaulted and we're, we've averted default now, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. But the other thing that we've done is also, uh, uh, when we first came, we put a ban, official ban on, on, on a lot of items uh, which has caused a lot of uh, difficulties to a lot of people and inshallah within the next couple of weeks we will try to get rid of those bans. So those bans will be lifted, uh, the bans on imports of certain goods, for instance uh, pet foods and things like that and, and, and we'll get rid of those bans. Uh, but at the same time uh, we have now uh, put some uh, prior registration conditions on uh, prior approval conditions uh, or prior information condition on certain other imports of uh, raw materials etc and, 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 and of new machines and, and, and that along with uh, fuel prices coming down and fuel requirements going down has really reduced my imports. Uh, let me just say that when we were subsidizing diesel and petrol uh, and motor gasoline, for instance, uh, the, uh, the demand for that had gone up. One, because this was price was cheap, but also because people were actually hoarding it and, and, and the companies were also storing it as much as they could. Uh, resultantly, Pakistan, which normally has six days of diesel, ended up with having with, and, uh, I think today it has probably like 42, 43 days of diesel. Uh, so seven times the normal, uh, normal uh, storage. Similarly, Pakistan, which has maybe 10 days of motor gasoline today has 30 days of motor gasoline. So we've actually imported a lot more motor gasoline and diesel and we probably have three to four months of uh, or maybe even more of uh, furnace oil. So we'll not be importing a lot of those things in the next, uh, we haven't imported them in the last few days and we'll, we are not going to import them a lot in the next fortnight or so. So that is also reducing our import bill plus some other you know, things that we've done, administrative measures plus you know, the increase in interest rates, uh, the dollar rate going up, you know, contraction of demand. All of that combined has resulted in our imports at, you know, at the port this, this year. This is as of day before yesterday, uh, the number was $3.77 billion. Uh, and since there were, I think, four working days left, uh, so we were expecting that the number would be about $4.3, $4.4 billion. Uh, you know, I mean, that's a remarkable contraction. In fact, we are pretty comfortable even if the imports are $5.5 .5 billion. But what would happen is that from next month onwards, inshallah, the incoming dollars in Pakistan by way of uh, exports and remittance will be more than the outgoing dollars from Pakistan by way of imports or some uh, debt repayments, uh, debt uh, servicing, I should say. Uh, and because we will have more imports, uh, in, we will have more inflow of dollars than outflow of dollars, we will inshallah then, therefore, 
uh, not have the pressure on Pakistani rupee that exists today. And we will, uh, as you will see, uh, that Pakistani rupee will not be under pressure anymore. At that point, we will either be able to build reserves or, you know, the rupee will appreciate. But that's a decision that, you know, I leave to uh, the short term future of two, three weeks from now. Uh, today, uh, when yesterday, for instance, I know that there was more inflow of dollars than outflow of dollars, but that was just one day. Uh, but but we've actually controlled the situation quite a bit now, uh, so that uh, imports have really reduced in Pakistan and, and and inshallah now the export plus remittance, which is the you know and remittance. Think of remittance as export of labor. Uh, that, that export of labor and, 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 and goods now is more in Pakistan than ex imports. So we have actually turned that corner and now we've become safe. Of course, this is only a temporary measure. I, I want demand to expand and I want the economy to grow. And uh, after a few months of breather, uh,